Hi and welcome to Chatteris.biz uh, Where we are now is in a mess of a garage and a project that I'm looking at at the moment that's the back of it, for it it's a Blitz & Torg lightning detector that will be the enclosure for it once I've finished it at the minute this is it under construction so the first thing I've done is make sure the version number of the printed circuit board matches the version number which is in the instructions downloaded off the net. Now what I did for the resistors, because uh, my asset's not brilliant, is simply use a digital voltmeter on the old setting to find out uh, what they are and then on the header of each of the strips resistors just quickly wrote them down to make it easier for me to find. Also this little bits box off the internet is a nice easy way of just sorting stuff out. The pliers there I simply use those uh, right at the tip at the end of the resistor and that helps me bend the, uh, the lead without putting any strain on the resistor. The frame it's in is a frame I've had for years and all that happens is that that, uh, that lid there simply clicks on it and then it allows me to turn it over there's a foam padding on it so the resistors and components don't fall out and that allows me then to solder from the reverse side so as you can see the resistors are, are all in and what I've done uh, as I go down it I tick them off on the list so I know exactly what I've done everything's a dry fit obviously at the minute just to make sure I've not made any mistakes I'll just work my way through it. So this kit came up a couple of weeks ago now, so it's just me getting around to doing it. Seems pretty straightforward. Um, I think the thing that's going to be the most difficult will be this little surface mount. You probably won't be able to see with this video, but there's little surface mount pads. I've not uh, soldered on surface mount before. Generally, it's always been through the hole, so that's going to be quite interesting. I do have a number of. Um, Soldering irons, so I've got my antic from there. Um, I've got little ones, I've got a needle point there at the back. I've got an array of soldering irons, so hopefully, I've got I'll have the right one for the right job on this one. Okay, so I'll do keep updates regularly, and hopefully, it'll help somebody uh, as I've been helped by the forums. Uh, WX Forum is particularly brilliant uh, at this. Lots of uh, expertise out there. Right, what's the LEDs? Resistor array pot put in. Is it all sold up? Use some switch cleaner, some isopropyl alcohol to uh, degrease the board before it's soldered. Make life a bit easier. That's how it's looking. It's coming on. So I think I'll. Uh, attack the surface mount components uh, next, that's the bit that's worrying me the most because I've never done that before. So, I'll get back to you. Okay, this is the completed board. Uh, it's temporarily plugged into USB port. Let's put the instructions, just do some testing. Um, as you can see, or hopefully see, there's a red power LED two yellow LEDs, that's because I've adjusted the pot just to test that as it says. The power LED didn't work when I first powered it up. Um, it was a dry joint on the back side. So let's show you that. So that's the connections there, just to the right of the top securing screw. So it looks a bit messy because I've got a bit of flux on it. I just need to Sort of deflux it. But, um, 
that's the back of the completed board. Um, not done soldering for quite a little old while, so it just took me time. Seems to have powered up all cake, so can't have done that bad a job of it. So, stand by for the controller. Okay, another update. That is the controller board. And I don't know if you can see, but there are a couple of empty sockets. And the reason for that is I didn't read the instructions properly. The instructions clearly say... Um, that... i find it. There it is, just there. Some of the radial capacitors have to be folded down. And did I do it? No, I didn't. I ended up soldering them. Oops. Basically, like uh, that. And because of that, they wouldn't fit board on top of it. So I've got to buy some new ones today. He pays your friend, and that's pretty much we've got to lie down. Obviously, not like that, but like that. So, that's what I've got to do now. I'm going to solder those in so they lie down. That will allow me to put the discovery board on the top of it. Remember, don't do it like that. You have to do it like that. Right, the unit controller has just been powered up and that works okay. The, put the capacitors lying on the side rather than upright. Schoolboy error. Uh, the other thing I didn't do is the discovery board on the top. Uh, you can see the whole array of pins. Um, I should have plugged that in uh, and then used that through the uh, printed circuit board and then soldered it up just to make sure everything aligned perfectly. Uh, I didn't. Uh, anyway, as it was, it, it works, but so just a tip there. Um, it's all powered up. Uh, this uh, lead here, this one is going to the USB of a local uh, PC that I've got. Uh, this is the one which goes to the uh, amplifier. I'll show you that now. Just set up there on the workbench. Uh, I've mounted mine in there using uh, an angle box, 20mm angle box, a little bit of 20mm. Uh, conduit with a, a male adapter. Uh, I've ordered off eBay some end stops to tidy it up. But that's the uh, that's the amplifier board. Simply just used a grommeted entry uh, through into it. The other grommet there is uh, for flash programming through that mini USB. Um, I've got a Netgear switch just temporarily. So from that port 14 that comes from our network upstairs. I go into port 1, uh, the two black uh, cat 5s, one of them goes to the PC and the other black lead, that one there, the one, the one following, um, that particular one there, that goes uh, to the uh, controller board there. Um, one of the things it did say, I'll see if I can show you, is, let's just press this blue button, that gets me in a menu. Now bear in mind this hasn't been set up yet. This is me, it's just been fired up less than 10 minutes. Uh, there's the IP address, uh, 192.168.1.6. What I did then, I went on a local computer that I've got here. And uh, let's see if I can do it. And there it is, so I don't know if you can see that. You simply browse for it, and then you come up with this screen. Uh, the uh, controller's got a built-in web browser, so you don't need to do any software for that. It just comes up, and from there you can sort of make all your uh, your changes. I'm not at all familiar with it. I say it's brand new, so uh, I've got a bit of playing about to do. This program at the back, this is the programmer for. This is a flash programmer for the controller chip. All downloadable. Uh, the bin file is available from the Blitzenberg site. So that's uh, that's dead easy. It works first time. Um, 
not I'm clever or anything, it just happened to, <laughs> it was more of a fluke than anything I suppose, but anyway it did. Um, so that's it there, sat happily, uh, chatting away. Um, this other lead here, this one is the GPS antenna, I've just happened to just stick that on a filing cabinet in the, sh in the garage. Um, you can see that blue light flashing there, the blue LED. That's saying that uh, it's receiving a GPS signal. Um, to the side of the GPS cable coming in, there's a solid green that shows it's picked up a satellite. And uh, on the ST board, to the right of that small connector, there's a power connector, power light. And there's a flashing, a uh, couple of flashing lights up at the moment. To be honest, I don't know what they're doing at the minute. So we've not really had a good old mooch. But that's it. It's powered up. As I get more familiar with it, um, I'll post a bit more. The build was relatively straightforward. Um, it's been a while since I've done some soldering. The tools that I use, let's just go over to this side. Um, I use my pliers so I could bend the components. I've mentioned that once before. Certainly the glass diodes are very delicate and you don't really want to go bending those without giving them some mechanical protection uh, otherwise you might damage them uh, the other things are used um, a pair of uh, wire cutters to uh, to trim the circuit board off some uh, tweezers there to uh, pick up the very small components um, used a knife just to make sure um, Certainly on some of the surface mount that I didn't uh, get the solder blob in uh, and make sure the tracks were clean. The other stuff that I used was uh, this uh, switch cleaner. And I used that switch cleaner sprayed on the board. Uh, it's just got isopropyl alcohol and it just allows the board to be degreased and it aids soldering. Um, Soldering irons, uh, that's my soldering iron solder station there. Uh, the tip on it is um, it's not too bad. Where are we? There we go. So it's not that big a tip. But it was still too big for some of the surface mount components. So I used uh, this one, which is a pencil tip, uh, 15 watt Antex iron, and that was uh, absolutely brilliant. The other most crucial thing for little old me is uh, is this thing. Without it, I'm as blind as a bat. I might look like something out the uh, some kind of Disney film with it on, um, uh, Mr. Magoo. But uh, without it, I, I it would have just been a blob of solder. That, that is for sure. So that's it there. That's the amplifier. That will be going up in the loft when it's finished. And um, that is the controller so when I get this mounted in a, in a box uh, I'll post up a bit more and when I get more familiar with it I'll be able to tell you then what I've learned it's not a lot there is some excellent expertise out there uh, WX Forum um, there's some geniuses completely so without them uh, this, this thing probably would have fried by now but anyway thanks for watching